What's overpaid? What's overinvested in? What's underinvested in? What what do you what gamble do you need to make? Hi, my name is Devin. Today I own several multi-million dollar companies. We started with five thousand dollars in a credit card. I don't know the easy way. I only know the hard way. Hey everyone, welcome to the Whiteboard Entrepreneur Podcast, where I give straightforward advice to fuel the entrepreneur in all of us. I'm Devin Dickinson, and today I want to talk to you about making changes. And it is getting close to the end of the year, but right now I have this kind of New Year's mindset. and And I would tell you I'm a planner. Um, I think if you've watched these podcasts, you know that you know I don't wait just for January to make decisions, or you know I have a plan every month going into the month, um, always planning, coordinating, changing. Um, but even me, someone who loves to plan and coordinate, when this kind of end of the year is rolling around, I'm always thinking about okay, what's big in 2024? Where are we going? What are we doing? How are we dreaming big? How are we acting big? What big bets, decisions, changes are we making? And, and it's exciting. Um, but I realized after working with a lot of people over the years that many of us get this kind of excitement, but we don't often follow through And I'm not talking about your New Year's resolution and your diet. I'm talking about at your business and with whatever you're in charge of, whatever organization you're running, that we don't always follow through with those necessary changes or those necessary investments. And the reason is is because it's hard, right? Like, so I heard someone talking about this the other day and it's kind of what got my juices flowing, but he was giving a sports analogy. You know, I like to give sports analogies, but he said, listen, he goes, If your favorite team in the world goes 500 and doesn't make the playoffs year after year and they're not making changes, like you are freaking out as a fan. You're like, what the heck is going on with this GM? Why aren't they firing people? They need to get a new coach. They need to bring in new talent. They need to do whatever, right? Like they need to run a new offense, whatever. Everyone's got all these opinions about what changes should be made on like a sports team that really at the end of the day is just sports and doesn't mean anything other than your Sunday afternoon entertainment. But we have something that's like our livelihoods, the career that we run, what we do nine to five every day, day in and day out, that which we pour our life into but somehow we start to become okay with the mundane, right? Will you become okay with average growth, right? And you're like, well, no, I'm not okay with average growth. I'm, I really, really want to grow. I really want to, my company to thrive. I want my profession. I want my career to go up and to the right. I want to do all of these amazing things. And I'm frustrated that they're not. But I'm going to tell you probably the reason that you're frustrated and you think that you want growth, but you're not getting it is because just like that GM, you're unwilling to make the hard changes. And so you go, well, yeah, I'll make hard changes. Well, really, will you? Because listen, those sports teams, right? What has to happen is somebody's going to lose a job, right? That's not easy right? And so let's bring this home. Let's bring this to your house. Let's bring this to the organization that you run. Let's bring this to the the folks around you. Like you have to evaluate in your company what's working and not what's not working. What's overpaid? What's overinvested in? What's underinvested in? What, what do you, what gamble do you need to make? Right? Like as a GM, they have to go and spend a lot of money to bring on a new player and they don't know if it's going to work or not. Right. And that's scary. Right. And so you, you're looking at your company going, Oh, I really want to launch this new product line. I really want to go into this new geographic market, but it's scary. And we'll get mad at the GM for not making the changes or doing the, taking that chance. But when it comes to us, uh, we treat our, we give ourselves a little bit of ease and we're like, oh, you know what? Actually, maybe I'm okay with a 500 season. Maybe I'm okay with 2% year over year growth. Maybe I'm okay with making just a little less last year than I made this year. Right. And so we start to literally accept mediocrity because we're unwilling to change. But if you're listening to this podcast, this is, that's not you. If you're listening to this podcast, you're going, no, 
I need to, I know that I need to make these changes. I know that I need to evaluate. And so let's think about some of these things that you need to evaluate going into this new year. Like, I think there's a ton of things. These are just some that I'm going to list off for you real quick off the top of my head. The one and the hardest one, I'm going to start with this personnel. I talk about this all the time and I'm not heartless. Like I'm not, this is difficult for all of us. Right. And oftentimes it doesn't mean that people need to leave the organization, but like you have to evaluate your personnel personnel. Are your people providing the value that they're being paid for? Has something changed in the organization? Every year, are they growing? Are they pushing? Are they thriving within your organization? Are they helping your organization achieve the goals that you want them to achieve? And it doesn't necessarily mean that, you know, they're doing a bad job, but the roles might change, right? Like in an organization, you might not need another wide receiver, right? You might have too many wide receivers and you need a running back. And you can see that as a family. You're like, we really need to trade one of these wide receivers and get a running back. But then when you look in your organization, and you're like, uh, I'm really overstaffed in this side and I'm understaffed on this side. And are you willing to do those hard things with your staffing? Even because like I said, this is hard. Those people that you're overstaffed on this side of the, the, uh, of your company might be doing a great job, but you don't need three of them. You only need two, right? Or you only need one and you need somebody else over here and you need to free up this money so that you can bring somebody over here so you can get someone in your organization that's that running back, right? And so, you know, personnel is difficult. That's why I encourage you to start there, think there. Also think about your product offering, right? Like what needs to evolve in your product? Like, have you uh, invested enough? Are you growing? Is your product growing? Is it evolving? Is it getting better? You know, is your competition beating you from an offering standpoint, like really evaluating, you know, your product. Also, you need to evaluate yourself, right? Like, are you doing what you need to be doing as a leader, right? Maybe you need help. Maybe you need insight. Maybe you need someone who's going to mentor you. Maybe you need someone to be accountable to. Maybe you actually need to give up certain areas of responsibility within your company that you're just not frankly good at. Like maybe you shouldn't be running sales. Maybe you shouldn't be running uh, the engineering team. Maybe you're a bit of an old dog and there needs to be a new trick, right? Like, and these are the things that you have to evaluate. Should we be working remote versus in the office, right? right? Uh, should we be having travel expenses versus Zoom meetings? Should we be reevaluating kind of the allocation and marketing? How are we spending our marketing spend ver traditionally versus where should we be spending it in 2024? You need to evaluate all of these different areas, different divisions, different spends within your companies, and then also evaluating the opportunities. Like what is an opportunity last year that we won that we didn't understand, that, that we didn't know that we were win, that we could win. And can we, can we increase that? Could we, you know, double down on that? I was just talking with someone the other day and they were in landscaping and, and they realized that, you know, they were doing pretty good in landscaping, but they started getting these phone calls where people wanted them to put in a pickleball court. And so they're like, yeah, last year, you know, I did this, you know, uh, or I'm sorry, like five years ago, I put in like two, I had somebody come in and I just kind of outsourced it to someone else. And we put in like two pickleball courts. And then like the year after that, all of a sudden we had like eight to put in. And then now they were like, wait a second. They've started to evaluate how much money they were giving away just in letting, you know, a subcontractor do the pickleball courts. And all of a sudden they thought, man, this is an opportunity. And so their company evolved and guess what? Now they do pickleball courts and basketball courts. And there's these things where like, we need to evaluate where's our company going? What opportunities are start, is the market changing and presenting themselves that can take my company to that next level? So it's not always about cuts. A lot of times it's about investments, but investments can be equally scary. I know they're scary to me because it's real money that you're putting out there. And so we have to evaluate these things. And this is the time of the year to do it, right? And if you think, oh, you know what? I'm just going to start pondering on this. I'm going to start thinking about this. Listen, that's okay. You might be that type of person that needs 90 days to think about this. But I'm going to challenge you and tell you that are you, are you pausing on this and really mulling it over so that you can come to a conclusion? Or are you just trying to put out of your head because you're afraid to make a decision? Because if you're afraid to make a decision, you shouldn't be running a business 
right? If you're afraid of making a decision, you should not be in charge of other people. They shouldn't, you know, they should not be relying on you to lead a company. They should not be relying on you, you to be this person who's going to uh, help them grow in their career. And so let me challenge you guys, get good at making decisions. Use this time of the year to, to make some investments, make those bets, have some, th- have some hard conversations on this side. You're going to have to cut over here so you can invest over here. But that's what a great leader does. That's what a great GM does. That's how uh, teams make the playoffs year after year. That's how teams become dynasties. And that's how your company is going to become successful. I'm Devin, and this is the Whiteboard Entrepreneur Podcast. I know this is going to help you out. 